Hello, I'm Gerd Leonhardt, media futurist from Switzerland. I'm here in beautiful Sydney, uh, albeit of course it's winter and it's not sunny, but in any case, I'm here with Ross Dawson, uh, also futurist, and, and we're having conversations today about some important topics that we deal with uh, on a daily level. And so the, uh, what we want to talk about now is the music industry and uh, the future of music, which some of you may know I'm, um, I've been writing books about for quite some time. But let me ask Ross, you know, Ross, what's, what's your take on where's the music business going? Does it have a future? Uh, are you listening to music? And if so, where are you stealing it? No, just kidding. Uh, go ahead and... and uh, well, there's, uh, there's obviously less money in music than there was, and there probably will be less money again in the future, but, you know, it's driven by human desires. Humans like music, and uh, humans also want to make music. So there, there will be markets for music in various ways. I guess what I've been really interested in is a, a couple of things. One is this collaborative filtering in music, this mm -hmm. idea of how do we collaborate to find the music that we love. And you know, one of the early uh, forays in that space is Last FM, which is still a, a solid offering. And uh, I suppose is one of the better ones. I, I prefer Last FM to Pandora in terms of because it is truly about looking at the matchmaking, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as in what are music profiles and how do they match up with music. Now I've been very excited about Turntable.fm, which is bring us into the social music realm. Mm -hmm. And this is something which we, we haven't truly had before, and this is the ability to basically to, to collectively create playlists. Playlists have all been done by individuals now. Mm -hmm. Now playlists have been done by groups, and I think that's... These are two of the, the spaces in which certainly shaping the way in which we're going to be listening to music. Yeah, I think in many ways, I think we're going back to what used to be maybe 70 years ago or so before the invention of vinyl and, and the CD, of course, is that music is about an experience and it's about what happens between people and it's about sharing because what the record industry had done for a long time on the CD is to productize music, right? Yeah. So that you would buy a CD and that's all they wanted. And then you would buy another one, and that would be it. And now you're buying on iTunes, right? But music isn't about products, right? Music is about experience. It's about sharing. Yeah. It's about discovering new stuff. It's about the whole ecosystem. And artists are not that concerned, I think, necessarily with unit sales, but about audiences, right? They yeah. want to have large right. audiences. They yeah. want to be recognized. So we're going back to what the good part about music is, which is the creation of, of, of sort of like-minded people, but also uh, being able to share and to... Um, and to figure out the commercial process of this because music as a product I think is dead because uh, that means CDs, it means pay per unit, it means a sort of commercial process. Right? If you make music an experience again using services like Spotify, Simfy, Morg, Last.fm, Pandora, and then it's not all about buying units, you know, then I yes. think we're getting back into a good stream of thought to where the recorded music industry of course has shrunk 70% in a decade, right? Yep. That's not surprising because of the refusal of the industry to essentially allow it to go further than the product. You know, In my view, yep. that's the biggest yep. problem. Well, I mean, as you say, music is an experience, uh, though, and there's, there's many artists, clearly, where their major revenue sources are not in music sales, but mm -hmm. in associated uh, products, not uh, least uh, concerts, though not all musicians have that model. Not all musicians even want to, or in a situation to perform live. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I suppose, you get this divide between musicians who are able to and want to engage in the, the ancillary revenue streams of uh, uh, entertainment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. products and endorsements and all sorts of things, and those who are focused on the music. But the, I, st I still think there is a model for, for unit sales. I still think you know, iTunes and a proliferation of other ones will be able to get it. And I, I still buy songs that I hear on the radio, uh, capture on, uh, uh, on uh, Shazam, and, uh, and, I, and I buy them because I do want them in my collection. I do want one part of my own personal playlist. Then again, I think you know, we're, of course, by age, and so we're not the typical consumer in the sense today, you know, for kids, music is just a click. Yeah. Right, so when you like something, you click on it, it plays, plays on YouTube, plays anywhere else, and your willingness to pay is going to be subject to other added values uh, around the music, for example. You may decide that you want a service to where you can stream high definition or webcast, yeah. Yeah. you pay extra for that. It's a bit like cable TV, except that the first step would be included somewhere. Right? Yes. So we're going to see offerings of uh, flat rate services uh, uh, bundled yeah. into, into yeah. Uh, ISPs, 
uh, free and paid, both, right? And it's not going to be about buying news, it's going to be about buying access, right? A shift from copy to access. And I think if the music industry keeps on refusing what people actually want, it will just die because, yeah. you know, this, this sort of idea of controlling what people do and then milking them as uh, in many which way, or sort of the idea of saying that this can be handled like it was 20 years ago, right? The only way to make money is to sell a CD. You know that's just completely broken. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and and we're seeing we're seeing that shift now. We're, we're going to see all of the major music companies either die or adopt the access based model. Yes. Uh, yeah. which, which of course they're working on. I hope you guys are working on that. So <laughs> <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> so back in uh, 2002, when I wrote Living Networks, I just did that very simple analysis of what would happen if you shifted uh, CD sales to uh, basically streamed uh, subscription models, and basically meaning that. Not only would you get four times the revenue, but everybody would have access to far more music than ever before. So it's like value creation on both sides. Why wouldn't you do it? But uh, that's because I, they can't control that part, right? If you yeah. can, uh, you can control distribution, but you can't control attention. Yes. Right? And, and yes. so therefore, this is the important part. I think that's something we have to let go of, and then it will just come to into place. I mean, the music industry is a fraction of the of the advertising or the. Uh, mobile industry or the ISPs. I mean, that's like three trillion dollars. The music industry is seventeen billion. That's like uh, can't even see it in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, there, there's lots and lots of potential there. I think if we get used to the idea that we're, we're not controlling what people do with distribution, we get we're basically making money off the attention, yes. whether it's ad yes. supported or, yeah. or or subscribed or paid for units, all in different proportions. But uh, that's sort of I think that's what it comes down to. So there's a snapshot of the future of music. Uh, for more uh, from me, uh, look at rossdawson.com or Ross Dawson on Twitter. And for good? It's uh, mediafuturist.com, and I've written a bunch of books. Most of them are free on the internet, except for the future of music, <laughs> which you have to buy on Amazon. But my book, Music 2.0, is available. Just uh, put Music 2.0 and GERD, G-E-R-D. You'll find lots of free PDFs around the web and, of course, at mediafuturist.com. And on Amazon, if you do want a debt tree, you can buy it there as well. Thanks very much for listening.